Uh, but let's turn our attention to Toronto FC. And uh, so they're, they're making moves, gentlemen. We know this. So let's first talk about the latest one. It is finally a done deal. Mark Anthony Kay from Colorado. The, um, the Reds have sent Ralph Prizo, the young midfielder, to Colorado. Also $1.025 million in general allocation money and a 2023 international roster spot and TFC's first round pick in um, the 2023 Super Draft. And, and I know, Ollie, you had, you had put this out on Twitter because we had been discussing this as well, right? Like, this is a team that was really starting to groom their young players. And I think we all had some high hopes for Ralph Prizo, and probably still do. I mean, I don't think he's come anywhere near, near to his ceiling. It was really unfortunate, the injury that he had that kept him out for a long time, and then he's finally come back. Been a, a bit of a tough go um, for him to, to get his rhythm back or, you know, get into the lineup on a consistent basis. But what does this tell you about where the mindset even is of Toronto FC that now they're willing to part with a young player to bring in a veteran player, a national team player, and that alongside with, Lorenzo Insigne with, of course, you know, we're hearing about Bernardeschi. I mean, is, is, has Toronto gone from transitioning with younger players to got to win now? Yeah, uh, you can't be half pregnant, right? Like, I, I think that's the, that's the what, what I mean by that is you need to you need to pick your course, right? You need to be either it's either all or nothing. Yeah. Um, and I, I think with CFC, look, you, there's different ways to build a team and Different uh, people are going to have different preferences on that. Some people like to see young players mm-hmm. built around and developed, and you take a bit more time and be a bit more gradual with, gradual with it, and that can be more sustainable, I think, in in some ways. So there's things to be said for that. But I think the important thing is whatever path TFC choose, they go all in on it, right? And and they actually commit to it and 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 go all the way. And I think they're doing that now, and it looks like they have a clear idea of what they want to do over the next two or three years, and that is to build as quickly as possible, uh, as strong as a team as they can to, to contend for MLS Cup with with experienced players who are ready to perform now. And the reality is, you know, you, you can have some young players in your squad as depth, I think, to, to support the first team players. But what they need right now around Lorenzo Insigne, around Crescito, Michael Bradley, Jonathan Azorio, is guys who are going to help them contend for a championship as quickly as possible. Um, I don't think there's really any sense kind of having one foot in in, in one thing of, of these veteran players who want to win championships straight away. And then on the other hand, have these young guys who are still learning mm-hmm. and, and who Bob Bradley's, you know, still trying to figure out whether he can fully trust or not. So I think that there is the potential for, for, for TFC to look back in a few years time and think, wow, it'd be really nice to have had Ralph Friso, a Toronto kid, and we'll, we'll see what he becomes. But, you know, uh, as of right now, they're trying to win titles. They're trying to do it quickly. And this move is, is a big step closer to doing that. I said it last week. I'll say it again. I am intrigued. Toronto FC has my attention because this can be just an over the top success story, or it could absolutely blow up. Yeah. It's very interesting to me because everything involving the Insigne deal and what president Bill Manning said on the television broadcast on, on on Saturday night was this is a build towards 2026. And that Insigne and Mark Anthony K are going to be part of this core group of players in the buildup to hosting a World Cup game in 2026 and stadium expansion and hopefully, you know, you know, wider spread interest of the team. All of these moves seem very much now. Um, What is incredible to me about Toronto FC, we, we all knew it was going to be a rebuild, a retool, use whichever word that you like. But the magnitude of this is absolutely next level. I'm, I'm I'm counting seven months ago, like TFC finished last season, last November in 17 months, they've been able to get rid of looks like four designated players now and almost 20 players overall. Pozuelo, Prizo, Lorea, Delgado, Altador, Fraser, Gonzalez, Zavaleta, Endo, Soteldo, Aro, Moro, Lawrence, Dyer, Mullins, Gallardo, Dunn, Deleon. This is what? Mm-hmm. 20 players going out and some key players coming in, K, Crescito, Insigne, Jimenez, O'Neill, McNaughton, Chung. The, the, the squad still needs more reinforcements. They need more players, but they're rather top heavy. They're going to have a third designated player spot once Sal- Salcedo uh, makes his way out the door, but 
you're going to have your, you know, your, your two DPs, Insigne plus incoming. Then you have a bunch of high-priced players. Bradley, Osorio, and Kay all make a lot of money in that midfield. So does Jimenez and, and Akinola up top. And when you're and giving you just, away all kinds of resources to yeah, Colorado, a million dollars. Yeah. It, make it, like, it, it, it's very difficult to determine what TFC may have or may not have in their cupboard because this is the way that Major League Soccer works with, with Gam and Tam. But man, like your resources have been depleted to a certain degree. Mavinga's on a good contract too. Your two goalkeepers are on a good contract. So it's going to be, still be a top-heavy side with some absolute difference makers in this team. But how quickly can they come together? Are you going to have the right mix? Do you have the players that can play a Bob Bradley type style of football? Play that 4 3 3. Who are those players that are able to get deep, get in, in behind the back line? I, I'm intrigued. They've got my attention. They are the must see, much must watch team in Major League Soccer. Yeah, sure. LAFC in, in, on the West Coast. I think that there's fewer questions about LAFC than there are for TFC. So. Let's see, bring it on. Let's see how this all plays out. And I think it's pretty obvious that Toronto FC would like to score more goals. They've had a lot of problems finishing. You even look at their game against San Jose on the weekend, 2-2. They created a lot of buildup. They created a lot of chances. Um, yes, they ended up getting the two goals. But here's the thing, gentlemen. It also seems defensively this is a team, obviously, that has a lot of issues. So now if you're talking about Salcedo, who's going to be leaving, that pretty much just seems it's inevitable. Uh, it's just a matter of of when, not if. He's going to go back to Liga MX. The team has been very forthcoming and saying that it's been very difficult with his wife giving birth uh, to their baby and needing to be close to her. So for family reasons, for mental health reasons, right, he needs to be closer to his family. That's going to happen. So from a personal perspective, it's good that they're doing the right thing and he's going to be close to his family. From a business perspective, ah, that is a massive hole that you're going to have at the center back position, not to mention you're now going to have a DP spot available. Um, I mean, what are you thinking on that, Ollie? Uh, well, I'm thinking like to, to Wills' point, this is a team that is, is is making a very, very big bet that they can win over the next couple of years. And and as much as like it's easy to kind of just write off this season, given the position they're in now, right now and the way they've started, like if they don't make the playoffs this season, that is one window of not many windows that's gone. Right. Like you can't, I don't think, just dismiss that out of hand and say, well, you know, in 2023, they could be really good. It's like they're not going to get many chances at this. Like the, the 2026 thing that Bill Manning talks about, like, I think you should judge actions rather than words in, in, in terms of how they're bu building this team. And the reality is in Major League Soccer, like it's very difficult to project four years ahead and think you're still going to have the same team intact in a salary cap league. I just don't think that's realistic. Yes, you can plan for 2026 in terms of succession planning and making sure you're in a good spot around that World Cup in different ways. But the idea that this team is going to be like peaking at that time, I think is kind of fantasy. I think it needs to happen much sooner than that. And so as much as this team is starting to look very talented from an attacking sense, you know, their ability to, 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 to stop conceding goals is still a massive question mark that's not going to get any easier with the departure of Carlos Salcedo. So, look, you, you have to keep that move in context as well. We all know it was about getting rid of Soteldo, who Tigres are already trying to offload, by the way, because he's causing problems there as well. Um, so it, it was always going to be one where, you know, it was never wow. going to be the perfect deal. But nevertheless, you know, you're, you're now in a position where you know, again, like you said, you've got another DP spot. You need to figure out in the short term what you're going to do with that in an effective way. Uh, and TFC have, have a real mountain to climb here to get back in the playoff picture. And, and I think that has to be a big target for them. I don't think, like I said, you can just say, you know, this season's kind of already gone and we're looking at next year. This is what's this is what's crazy about this. I think we'd all agree if you watch this team, like it needed to be refreshed. Like there was going to be a clear out. I'm just shocked how quickly it's come. 20 players yeah. in seven months. Like and that's one is extremely difficult to do. Um, you know, and, and, and unless it's it's costing you, I think it's costed TFC a, a certain number just in terms of what they've had to give up to get rid of some of these players. Instead of oftentimes clubs just are, are patient with problems and allow them to stay. And then when they're out of contract or when the time is right, they move on. This entire process just has been expedited by the signing of Lorenzo Insigne. And we've said it before, Insigne was kind of like, you thought he might be like the final piece or one of the last pieces to come in, but he was the first piece. I think everything that's now 
happening afterwards is because Insigne is here right now, which is absolutely fascinating. I'm not sure if you put the cart before the horse or how this works. That's why I don't think we've seen anything like this to this magnitude. One other thing I'll bring up, remember after the bloody big deal and, and, and Javinko and Altidore were in Toronto, they still got smashed that year in the playoffs 3-0 at Montreal. It, it was a horrible night. Uh, for TFC, and there's some significant questions whether they went a different direction in terms of their coach, in terms of, in terms of the front office. They stayed the course, brought in defenders, and guess what? This team went on to be a juggernaut over coming seasons. They, they're going to have to address the back. Andy, I just don't think it's it's smart business if you replace Salcedo and his, D, D, his DP spot with another DP center back. Just in this league, you get your value with designated players who are more attack-minded. You just do. It's just check, look at the history of this league. Um, I think you, you're going to have to be able be smart and creative about how you address the back four. Uh, look, Crescito, Crescito was good on Saturday, and he's 35 years of age. Is he going to be able to play every game? I don't, not yet. We'll see. So how they replace Salcedo, who, by the way, wasn't great for Toronto FC this year by, by his own standards. But mm -hmm. they're going to have to address that in a smart way. And I'm not sure which direction they go. Yeah, and obviously we have not seen Lucas Monotin or Caden Chung play uh, in a while. It, it, I mean, they made the leap from CPL to, to MLS, and then they had their moment in the beginning, but clearly Bob Bradley not seeing anything there that he feels that they would be longtime solutions, at least for the, the rest of this year. Um, but I want to turn um, our attention just to Lorenzo Insigne here to end off the show, because as we know, he's dealing with that calf injury. We thought he was, he was going to make his debut on July 9th. They pushed it to July 23rd. But I guess here's my question for you. Three days later, they play in the Canadian Championship. That is a chance because you don't know what's going to happen. You don't know if all these signings are going to turn things around. We don't know what's going to happen in the MLS season. But we do know that on July 26, Toronto FC and the Vancouver Whitecaps are going to play for a trophy. Do you play in Signe the 23rd and the 26th? Or do you even still wait to make his MLS debut because you want him to be good to go? On the 26th. I want you to pretend you're Bob Bradley here, Ollie. What are you doing with that player? That's playing a him in a, in, a, in a regular season game or playing him in a cup game right out, right out of the gate? All Platley. Let's go. I. <laughs> we only have like 30 I, I, seconds. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to have to th think of my answer quickly. I, 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 think, I got an answer. I, I'll, I, what I would do, I think, is I would bring him off the bench at home and then start him in the cup final. I think it's, it's bizarre to bring in a new situation in uh, a new player sorry in, in in a cup final but it's, you know this is this is a a unique one so i that's what i do i i think i try and preserve him a little bit but get him on the pitch in that home game and then get him in for the canadian championship final i play him as soon as possible tfc need to win in the league and they mm -hmm. need to win this canadian championship final this is their route into Concacaf champions league next season they want to go on and win this competition now healthy, they have like. to qualify. I get it, but they also need to win this competition. Yeah. Play him and play him soon. There you go.